Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars and constellations. Welcome, my name is Janine and in this video we will be exploring the constellation known as Monoceros the Unicorn. Monoceros is a fairly new constellation to me. It's one that I was never really familiar with, but what I didn't realize is that I've actually been looking at it for many, many years because it sits right next to Orion, Canis Major, and Canis Minor. It's just a really, really faint constellation, and it's difficult to see. But even though it's hard to see, there are some really fantastic celestial objects that are located in the boundaries of this constellation. Let's get a broad overview of Monoceros the Unicorn. It is a modern constellation that was introduced in 1612 by Dutch hieronographer Petrus Plancius. I hope I'm saying that correctly and forgive me if I'm not, but the name Monoceros is Latin for unicorn and it's classified as a seasonal constellation and it's best seen in the winter months in the northern hemisphere. So how did this constellation come to be? It was first depicted in 1612 under the name Monoceros Unicornis on a globe by the Dutch theologian and cartographer Petrus Plancius. He was one of the founders of the Dutch East India Company and he drew over a hundred maps for them. In 1595, Plancius trained Peter Kaiser, who was one of the chief pilots on the Dutch ship Hollandia, and he was trying to make astronomical observations to fill in blank areas around the South Celestial Pole. And of course, European maps didn't really have the southern skies on there because they were unexplored at the time. However, Kaiser died the following year, but his, his catalog continued on with the help of Fred, Frederick de Houtman. Again, I hope I'm saying that properly, but he was another Dutch voyager on the Hollandia. This catalog was eventually delivered to Plancius, and he developed eight new constellations. And those constellations are listed here, but the only two that really survived were Camelopardalis, the giraffe. Um, I've also seen it being depicted as a camel, and also Monoceros, the unicorn. So that's how this constellation came to be, and then it appeared in Johann Havelius's volumes um, showing the different star maps across the sky from that particular time, actually in 1690, I should say. So when do you see it? The best time to see it is in the northern hemisphere in during the winter months in the northern hemisphere and you really want to look for Orion and Monoceros is to the east of Orion. The best way to find this is really to look for the winter asterism triangle. I have a whole video about asterism so if you want to learn more about what those are they're not really true constellations but patterns that we can make in the sky that can help you navigate across the sky go check out that video. You really need extremely dark skies to see it because most of the stars are of fourth magnitude. So let's get some practice with how to identify it. Let's review the pattern that Monoceros makes across the sky. Here we have the official star map of Monoceros, and as you can see, many of the stars are really, really faint. If you look at the magnitude scale right here, most of the stars are fifth and fourth magnitude. But some of the other things that may have stayed out to you are these other really bright stars that lie right next to Monoceros. And these three bright stars right here make up the winter asterism known as the winter triangle. So if you can find the winter triangle, you can find Monoceros, or at least the pattern might be really, really difficult to point out in the sky. I personally ha cannot say with confidence I have pointed out the pattern of Monoceros. I just know the general area in which it's located, so that's how I find it. I may not necessarily point out the pattern, but I know the general overview of where it's located in the sky. So let's get some practice with how to find it. So as you're looking at this, at this picture, the thing that probably stands out to you the most is Orion. It's the one constellation that most people can recognize. You can also see Canis Major right down here with the brightest star Sirius as well as Canis Minor. And if we were to point out where Monoceros is, that's where it's located. So if we were to toggle back and forth, um, if you find it challenging to find that star pattern, well, I could say <laughs> join the club. It's really difficult to see. Um, but I kind of like to think of this as kind of his little, his horn. 
and then this is its head and then the legs. However, like most other constellations, this is one that really doesn't resemble a unicorn in my opinion. And if we were to point out the winter asterism, uh, or the winter triangle asterism, it's located right here. So if you go um, from this bright star right here over to Procyon, this is Betelgeuse or Betelgeuse, there's lots of different ways to pronounce it, I, I recognize that. But if you kind of draw a line from Bellatrix to Betelgeuse um, over to Procyon, which is in Canis Minor, then you can find this general area of where Monoceros is. And if we were to back up here, there are some pretty amazing features here. One, this is a little um, nebula called the Rosette Nebula. And then there's another fascinating object I'm going to point out right here. And that's what Monoceros is known for, really, are the celestial objects that sit within its boundaries. Here we have another star map, and I love this picture because it shows you most of the winter sky constellations. We have Orion, we have Taurus, we have Auriga, here is Perseus, uh, we have Gemini, Canis Minor, and then Canis Major. So can you point out to Monoceros? If you can't, that's quite all right. It is challenging to see, but use that strategy I just taught you. Use the shoulders of Orion, draw a line through towards Procyon, and then this is where at least the horn of the unicorn is. And if we were to point everything out here, this is what it looks like in the sky. So Monoceros has really, really faint stars, which makes it challenging to find. But even if you can't necessarily see the stars of the pattern, you should at least be able to identify where it's generally located. Let's get one more picture here just to get some more practice. Here you can see Orion, right there you have Canis Minor, and here you have a portion of Canis Major. So again, use the shoulder stars of Orion, draw a line, and then here is where Monoceros, or this whole general area is. But I didn't even point it out on this picture because I really think it's challenging to find the pattern of Monoceros. Now let's take a look at some of the celestial objects that are seated in the boundaries of Monoceros. And really, it may not be the star pattern that stands out in the sky with this constellation, but really the celestial objects that are located in its boundaries are really quite amazing. So let's unpack this here and see what's here. So here you can see the pattern of Monoceros. The stars are very, very faint. But I circled where all these interesting objects are located and if we were to label them first we have NGC 2264 there is a lot going on here so I'm not going to explain it right at this moment but later in the video you have the Rosette Nebula NGC 2232 which is an open star cluster you have the Seagull Nebula which is right along the border of Canis Major and Monoceros and then you have Messe Object 50, which is another star cluster. So let's dive in and take a look at some of these objects. The first one is the Rosette Nebula, and this is really a gorgeous object to see if you have magnification. And in fact, it's not just a nebula, but there's a star cluster located in here as well, and it's estimated to be 5,000 light years away. And what's going on here is that these young stars are exciting the gases and the atoms within this cloudy area and causing it to glow. And if we were to zoom in here, uh, the colors, I believe, are enhanced in this photo, but what that, what that allows us to see is the detail of all the cloud structures in here. And you can clearly see where this star cluster is. And it's estimated uh, for the distance of this to be 130 light years across. And if you were to find this, if we were going to zoom out here, this is where the Rosette Nebula is. Here's where Orion is. You use the shoulder stars to help you find Monoceros. So draw a line across the shoulders of Orion, and it brings you to these three stars. Those are kind of like the three stars. What The top is kind of like the... I like to think of it as the horn of the unicorn, and this is where the Rosette Nebula is located. So if you want to see this, I recommend you seek out dark skies in order to find it. 
The next feature I want to show you is that of the Christmas tree nebula. Well, which in fact there really is a lot going on here. And if we were to point this out, here's where the Rosette Nebula is. And this is where the Christmas tree nebula is, as well as the Fox Fur Nebula, the Co Nebula, and another star cluster. So if we were to point this out, that's what we are looking at. So you can kind of see that Christmas tree like shape. You can see this is a triangular shape and the pattern that the stars make, but there are some other features I want to label as well. So this whole region is known as NGC 2264. And if we were to point out where everything is, it has many different celestial objects in it. First, you have the Cone Nebula, which I circled in green. Then you have the Christmas Tree Nebula right here that makes that triangular shape. Inside there, you have the Snowflake Cluster. And down here, you have the Fox Fur Nebula. I'll never forget the first time I saw a photo of this. I was like, wow, that really does look like a fox fur. And if we were to take a look in here and zoom in, and this whole area, by the way, is, is classified as an emission and absorption nebula. So an emission nebula is where it's glowing, and then an absorption nebula are like the dark areas within this nebula where, where light is not able to pass through because of the dense gas. So here is the cone nebula, um, also, like I said, designated as NGC 2264, and it's estimated to be 2,700 light years away. And this is an area of star birth birth. So in here you have young stars that are being born. Next we have the snowflake cluster and this area right here is where the snowflake cluster is. I myself don't quite see a snowflake pattern but this picture is amazing because it was taken by NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope and what it reveals in here are newborn stars. So the little pink and red dots in here is where there's new stars being born. And astronomers nickname this the snowflake cluster because it resembles that shape, almost like spokes on a wheel. Next we have the Fox Fur Nebula. And if you're struggling to see that shape in there, I, I imagine this would be the head of the fox and down here is where the the fur part of the fox would be. So I encourage you to try to find this amazing celestial object and if you would look at it in the sky it wouldn't necessarily look like this because remember these photos are long exposure photos and you have to take pictures for a prolonged amount of time in order for these features to show up. But for me, I definitely see that Christmas tree shape. I see the cone nebula. I see the fox fur nebula. And right in here is where the snowflake cluster is as well. The final celestial objects we'll take a look at is known as the seagull nebula. And this is one that, again, it resembles, the shape of it does resemble a seagull to me. It's designated as IC2177, and it's a mission nebula estimated to be 3,650 light years away. And here is another view of this. I just love this photo. You can kind of see the shape of the wings right here and this would be the head of the bird. So again, this is a long exposure photo that allows the gases to be seen on the photograph. We've come to the end of our video about Monoceros the unicorn, so let's review everything we've learned so far. It's best seen in the winter months in the northern hemisphere, and it's classified as a seasonal constellation. The best way to find it is to use the winter triangle, and Monoceros is really sandwiched in between this asterism. There really are no particular bright stars. In fact, most of the constellation is pretty faint, so it makes it difficult to find. However, there are some amazing celestial objects to point out, including M50, the Rosette Nebula, the Christmas Tree Cluster, the Cone Nebula, in, which in general is the NGC 2264. 
that is located in this area right here. And then the Rosette Nebula is located here. So I wish you luck finding Monoceros. I feel the only way you're going to point out that star pattern is if you have extremely dark skies. And I have observed in dark skies before, but have struggled to find this particular pattern. But even so, I can easily point out the Winter Triangle. So if I can point out the Winter Triangle, then I know that Monoceros is really right that's kind of centered right within it with the exception of this part. So I wish you luck trying to find Monoceros. It is one of those modern constellations that has survived over the ages and is now an official star pattern of the International Astronomical Union. Remember, it takes time, patience, and practice to find the constellations. It took me over a decade to really get comfortable finding as many constellations as I can in the Northern Hemisphere where I live. So thank you so much for watching. Good luck, keep looking up, and stay safe out there. I'd also like to give a big shout out and thank you to David Cochran for allowing me to use some of his photos of Monoceros and Orion and the winter sky. Be sure to check him out on Twitter. He has some amazing photos that I just love seeing. Thank you, David. Thank you.